we have discussed the various uses of this acetazolamide. But remember, there are certain adverse effects associated with this acetazolamide. Now, you take this acetazolamide. Remember, this is a sulfonamide derivative. Right, remember, this is a sulfonamide derivative. Now, this particular sulfonamide derivative which is acetazolamide because it is a sulfonamide derivative this will cause bone marrow suppression right this will cause what is called bone marrow suppression and not only that this acetazolamide is also associated with hypersensitivity reactions Right, it is also associated with the hypersensitivity reactions. Now, apart from this, there are certain other adverse effects associated with your acetazolamide. The other adverse effects include what is called metabolic acidosis. Metabolic acidosis. Now, why there is metabolic acidosis? Why there is metabolic acidosis is because you see here, now when acetazolamide Now, acetazolamide will inhibit this particular channel that is sodium proton channel. So, thereby what will happen? Normally, the proton from the extracellular fluid, it has to be secreted into the tubule, into the proximal tubule lumen. In response to that, the sodium will be reabsorbed. In response to that, the sodium will be reabsorbed. Now, once this particular channel, once it is being inhibited, what is happening? The H plus ion will not be secreted into the lumen. So when H plus ion is not secreted into the lumen, thereby the individual pH will reduce. That is nothing but your metabolic acidosis. All right. So the other adverse effects include metabolic acidosis. And in response to that, what is it doing? It is causing the excretion of bicarbonate. So thereby the individual will have a urinary alkalosis. right urinary alkalosis and not only that what did we discuss the loop diuretics thiazide diuretics and as well as carbonic anhydrase inhibitors what they will do they will take the inhibited sodium inhibited sodium reabsorption they will take that particular sodium almost up to the level of the distal tubules and in the distal tubules the sodium gets exchanged with the potassium and the potassium it enters into the lumen of the tubule and this potassium it starts excreting within the urine and that will result in what is called hypokalemia that will result in what is called hypokalemia the mechanism how this hypokalemia develops i have discussed in detail in the just before few minutes now, so these are the adverse effects of acetazolamide. Remember, acetazolamide, it is a sulfonamide derivative. So that is why it will cause a bone marrow suppression. Right, it will cause bone marrow suppression. And not only that, it is responsible for many hypersensitivity reactions. And because it is inhibiting the secretion of the H plus ion, that will result in metabolic acidosis and as well as urinary alkalosis. And lastly, this will cause even your hypokalemia. And remember, these diuretics, that is, Carbonic anhydrase inhibitors should not be used in the presence of liver disease, right? So take the other point, carbonic anhydrase inhibitors should not be used in the presence of liver disease. Now let me explain you why. Now the question comes, why they should not be given in the presence of the liver disease? Why? Because whenever the individual is having liver disease they will have the precipitation or they will develop what is called as hepatic coma right they will develop what is called hepatic coma now why do you think that they develop hepatic coma normally the ammonia right normally the ammonia whichever is formed in our body right that will combine with H plus or what will happen is this ammonia whichever is being formed in the body 
it will enter into the urea cycle and this ammonia is converted into urea this ammonia is converted into urea and this urea it starts getting excreted out but in liver disease this ammonia is not converted into urea because the urea cycle will take place within the liver only when the liver is normal the ammonia will be converted into urea and urea is excreted from the body when liver abnormality is there this ammonia will not be converted into urea and thereby what will happen to the ammonia content the ammonia content will increase this ammonia whichever has been increased what it will do is it will cross the blood brain barrier right it will cross the blood brain barrier so once the ammonia crosses the blood brain barrier it starts depositing within the cerebral parenchyma and thereby the individual will land up in what is called as encephalopathy right the individual will land up in what is called encephalopathy right so if there is liver disease the individual will land up in hepatic coma why this ammonia will cross the blood brain barrier will deposit within the brain parenchyma and that will result in hepatic encephalopathy now in a normal individual this particular ammonia it gets secreted right that excess ammonia will get secreted or filtered from glomerulus to the bowman's capsule it is excreted through the kidney after the conversion to the ammonium all right so this nh3 which is filtered from glomerulus to the bowman's capsule it will combine with this h plus it will combine with this h plus and that will result in what is called ammonium nh4 plus that will result in what is called nh4 plus now this ammonium is non toxic it gets excreted through the urine now once you give this carbonic anhydrase inhibitors once you give carbonic anhydrase inhibitors what do they do they decrease they decrease the secretion of the h plus into the tubules so once they decrease the secretion of the h plus into the tubules that will results in enhanced reabsorption of the ammonia why because when h plus is not secreted into the tubule the ammonia is not converted into ammonium this ammonia whichever is being filtered is again being reabsorbed into the interstitial space or into the serum or into the circulation of the blood and this ammonia whichever is being reabsorbed this will make the individual to have toxicity right this will make the individual to have toxicity so remember in those individuals wherever there is presence of the liver disease you should not give carbonic anhydrase inhibitors why the individual will land up in what is called hepatic coma why because that ammonia in a normal individual is converted into urea by urea cycle in the liver once the liver is damaged the ammonia is not converted into urea and this particular ammonia it will start crossing through the blood brain barrier and will make the individual to land up in the hepatic encephalopathy and this increased ammonia will also start getting secreted from the glomerulus into the bowman's capsule if he is a normal individual he is not taking carbonic anhydrase inhibitors what will happen to this ammonia the h plus ion which is secreted normally will combine with ammonia to form ammonium ion that will be excreted out or ammonium is a non toxic substance but whenever you are giving carbonic anhydrase inhibitors the h plus ion secretion will be inhibited once the h plus ion secretion is inhibited the ammonia is not converted into ammonium and this ammonia will be reabsorbed from the tubules that will further aggravate the toxicity in the individual so remember these carbonic anhydrase inhibitors should not be used in an individual with liver disease now we will go back to our previous question what we have discussed we have discussed acetazolamide is competitive and reversible 
carbonic anhydrase inhibitor that was option A. Option B non-competitive and reversible carbonic anhydrase inhibitor and option C competitive and irreversible carbonic anhydrase inhibitor and option 4 non-competitive and irreversible carbonic anhydrase inhibitor. Now after having the discussion what we will come to the conclusion the conclusion is the acetazolamide is it is a non-competitive and reversible carbonic anhydrase inhibitor right so it act by non-competitive but reversible inhibition of the enzyme and what are the examples of this carbonic anhydrase inhibitors they include acetazolamide they include brinzolamide they include dorzolamide so this is completely about your carbonic anhydrase inhibitors which are weak diuretics